Hello, this is Richard Collins, your instructor in ATM 101 Weather and Climate of Alaska here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Welcome to Unit 12. In this unit we are exploring weather analysis and weather forecasting. The investigation this week draws on the observations and analysis from Unit 3 and Unit 4 and uses that real weather that you observed to study how forecasting works and how accurate forecasting is. We will make all the forecasting data, maps, and other materials available on the Blackboard site for you to use this week. The reading for this week draws on Chapter 13 of Weather Studies and Chapter 6 of the Climate of Alaska. The chapter from Weather Studies provides a lot of details about how the weather industry works. A lot of details about how the government agencies in the weather industry works. And while this material is important, I'm much more interested this week that you get an experience of making forecasts for yourselves, not necessarily understanding all the bureaucracy of forecasting. The lecture screencast this week is by Eric Stevens, a real National Weather Service forecaster, where he discusses the real nuts and bolts of making basic forecasts and the basic principles of forecasts. Eric has given guest lectures in ATM 101 for several years and they've been well received by the students and I think you'll enjoy his presentation. The chapter from the climate of Alaska talks about local effects that can affect weather such as thunderstorms, forest fires and ice fog and puts them in an Alaskan perspective. We can all be critical of weather forecasting. Everybody likes to make fun of weather forecasters for getting it wrong. Remember weather forecasters are trying to precisely predict the future they're not just giving you a horoscope in the newspaper. While synoptic scale systems can go a long way in explaining weather, local effects matter a lot and this is particularly important in issues like snowfall and other forms of precipitation where local geography can really change the view that comes from a synoptic map and those local details are very important. As you work through the material keep in mind how we define success in a forecast. Is it successful enough for a forecast to be good plus or minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit? Is it a significant mistake if the wind came from the southeast when we had forecast it coming from the south? If there is a forecast for no precipitation, is it a failure if there's trace amounts or small amounts of precipitation? Our thresholds for success and failure really depend on what we're doing. If we're spending time outdoors camping or we're planning an outdoor wedding, our sensitivity for how good the forecast is is much higher than if we're planning to spend a weekend indoors doing chores. In your screencast, you will be reporting National Weather Service data and forecasts in your Excel spreadsheets. Um, what I want you to do from your observations from Unit 3, though, is bring in your own perspectives of what you saw as well as just reporting the data. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me or the teaching assistants. Thank you and good luck.